Today, I'm talking about digital marketing metrics and what you need to take notice of when measuring your success for 2023. Marketing is so much more than that. Once your strategy is laid out, what else do you need to plan? Just to introduce myself, I'm Leanne Cohen's digital success coach and owner of the agency Marketing Leap. And my passion is to actually demystify digital marketing for business owners and entrepreneurs by providing educational courses and training to give you marketing clarity and confidence, as well as offering you some practical marketing solutions that we use in the agency that we know work to actually help you springboard your business to success. So the digital space is actually changing more rapidly than ever. And thanks to technology, we are looking at a completely different 2023 than what we've experienced this year. Now, the digital world is huge and it's complex, but the key to success is actually knowing the right metrics to track. So if you're not following your performance and your results, you're not going to know what's working and what's not. So to help you identify which digital marketing KPIs are most important for your brand in 2023 and beyond, I'm going to run through a list of the most critical performance metrics for measuring success on social media and just for your digital marketing as it stands. The first one is your digital lifetime value. Now, your customer lifetime value is the total expected revenue from a customer over their entire relationship with your company. So the longer a customer continues to work with you or buy from you, the greater their lifetime value becomes. Now, there's a lot of different formulas out there, but the simplest formula for measuring your customer lifetime value is to actually take the average order amount times the average purchases per year times the amount of time that they're with you. But as we know, it's more important to actually keep customers than it is to search for new ones. So where this gets interesting is you know when you're like us here at marketing leap we've got clients that have been with us since I, I started nine years ago and others that might come and join and they might stay with us for about four or five months depending on the length of the campaign but working out your customer lifetime value is a really great way to work out exactly what's actually working and what's not but it's a really good starting point hubspot has actually got a really cool tool that i'll put the link to this below so you can actually go and download this for yourself because they actually have quite a few different calculations here on the sheet that you can use so like i said there's a number of different ways that you can calculate your customer lifetime value but like everything i believe it's best to keep it simple and it just gives you a really good idea of what that customer is worth to you. Now, the second metric that you really need to keep an eye on is your net promoter score. Now, this is a simple and effective measure of your customer satisfaction. Now, this HubSpot tool actually has a calculation for this as well. Now, your, your net promoter score can actually be used as an indicator of customer loyalty, and it's critical when it comes to building a loyal following for your brand or for your business. So this is where the surveys come in that you send out asking people, you know, would you recommend this particular company? Then the responses are actually broken down into different categories. You can have the top one, which is, you know, you can either mark it out of five or mark it out of 10, and that will determine. So, you know, the top one is actually, you know, they're more than likely to refer others. The next level down would be, you know, they're satisfied, but it might not be enough for them to recommend your company to someone else, or, you know, they're not happy. Uh, they didn't actually give negative feedback, but they might not come back. And then, you know, a detractor who is just, you know, not going to promote you at all. But it gives you an idea of what your net promotion score is, and it gives you an idea of what the customer satisfaction is with the service that you offer. Now, the third metric is your lead to conversion rate. Now, your lead to conversion rate is actually a really valuable metric because it shows how well your marketing campaigns are converting when they lead to sales. You can actually have a look at, if you are doing some kind of a marketing campaign, you can actually have a look at the number of leads that are coming in and then divide them by the number of customers from those leads, the ones that actually convert. So it's almost a bit like your conversion rate. Another way of looking at it is your customer acquisition cost, which is the amount of money that you spend on sales and marketing that's required to actually close the deal. 
and you can actually see here that with this service metrics calculator, there's another option here for you to actually calculate that as well. Again, it gives you a really good idea on where you should be spending the money and how much money you're actually making. Now, the fourth metric is marketing qualified leads. Now, marketing qualified leads are leads that have been identified as potential, but you haven't contacted them and you're not too sure how good a quality they are. This could be because the person hasn't filled in, in an onboarding form or because they've just filled out a contact form and uh, haven't got any further. And you've got to remember too, it's all well and good getting a whole heap of leads, but if you can't convert those leads into customers, you're wasting your money and you're wasting your time. So, you know, your marketing qualified leads actually shows you that where the new business is coming from and it's knowing exactly how high quality they are. Interestingly enough for us, probably about 70% of our clients are, are referral or word of mouth. So they're already qualified by the time we start working with them or we start onboarding them. So you've really got to make sure that the leads that are coming in are quality enough that you can actually convert into clients. And then of course, the final one is your return on your investment. So how much money does it cost you to actually get a lead? And one of the easiest ways, this is actually one of the easiest ways to determine whether you're making enough money from your campaigns or not, because if your return on investment is low, then there's room for improving your marketing and getting people to work with you. Not only that, but if it's not working and your return on investment is low, it could be that you're just marketing in the wrong place or you need to just stop all your campaigns, take a step back and see what's actually working. There's a lot of calculators out there that you can use, but to know whether it's effective or not, your a marketing return on investment, you should be looking at roughly at about a five to one ratio, which means that you get $5 back for every dollar that you spend. Now, an exceptional return on investment is a 10 to one. So you get $10 back for every dollar that you spend. Anything that is below a, a two to one is considered to not be profitable and you're better off just stopping it, having a look and, and re-looking at where your leads are coming in. So how do you calculate this if it's not a paid campaign? So a lot of the work that we do when it comes to email marketing and blogging and things like that, one of the fun parts is trying to work out the return on that investment. So if we take blogging, for example, what you're going to do is you're going to calculate your time related costs and your production costs and your promotional costs to your actual spend. So you would track the number of hours that you or your employee spent writing the blog. Uh, if you're paying a wage, you would calculate that hourly wage in. If you are doing it yourself, you should have an amount that you are calculating your time is worth and you calculate that in. So if we use, let's just say a legal firm as an example, now let's just say they spend $900 paying for five blog posts to be written and then another $100 through boosted posts or through a little bit of a, a Facebook campaign. Those particular posts then create eight leads. Of those eight leads, four become clients. Straight away, to calculate their return on their investment, you're looking at the eight leads by their number of blogs times what they've earned, less what they've paid. So basically, in a nutshell, if they have got four leads from five blogs that cost them $900 or $1,000 all up, then their return on their investment is 700%, which is a good return. You can also look at this for email marketing, which is usually $38 to $42 return on your investment as well. And then the same with video content. But like anything to do with marketing and digital marketing these days, it's all about tracking and knowing where your clients and your customers are coming from. It's monitoring these particular factors and that's going to help you determine whether your campaigns are actually successful. So look at how much time it took to create, track the total cost of creating it, supplies, services, the software, and then what you spend for promotion. And then where possible, use some kind of a tracking URL so you can start tracking where people are coming from. And then there are the other non-financial returns on your investment as well. So did you get any social media engagement? Two people that are really good at doing this is Lauren Clement and Annette Densham. They'll write a blog and they are really good at creating a non-financial return and as far as creating traffic and getting people engaged in what it is that they've actually shared online. So that's something else that you need to look at when it comes to your return on your investment is looking at your brand awareness as well. In all honesty, that's literally just scratching the surface of metrics. 
when it comes to actually tracking your digital marketing performance. The five main metrics that you really need to track if you are running digital marketing campaigns and you are creating content online, the first one is to know what your customer lifetime value is. And that is the total expected revenue from a customer over their entire relationship with your company. The second one is your net promoter score which is a simple and effective measure of your customer satisfaction. The third one is your lead to customer conversion rate. And that is the percentage of leads that convert to customers. And in my opinion, I think this is the most important one, knowing what your lead to customer conversion rates are. The fourth one is calculating your marketing qualified leads, which you know is actually just calculating the quality of leads that you've got coming in that will actually convert into a client or a customer. And then the fifth one, which is probably the second most important, is your return on your investment or your ROI. And you've got to bear in mind that that isn't always monetary. So I hope that has given you some ideas for measuring your marketing success. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So you really do need to start looking at your strategic plans. If you'd like to learn more about how I can help you plan for a successful 2023, then comment below and let's chat because I offer strategy sessions and also through my agency Marketing Leap, we offer a full range of done for you, realistic, practical marketing solutions that actually work from websites, SEO, social media management, paid ads and lead generation that will actually help you determine how many leads you've got coming in and what the return on your investment will be. I hope that has been of some value to you today because, you know, everything that I do here online and with these videos is designed to help give you some clarity and to, uh, in some degree, help you learn how to generate leads and stop drowning in the overwhelm. I hope you'll join me next week. Bye for now.